Today, I'm gonna give you a plan to speed up your hands, your double kick, your single kick, and your weak hand. And at the end, we're gonna put it all together in the ultimate 30-day speed plan. So first, let's start off with speeding up our hands. The four pillars of hand speed are crucial because to become faster, you don't just work on speed. You have to have a well-rounded approach, which is why you wanna get better at all four of these pillars. The first one being technique. This is how you are going to move efficiently to play the fastest possible. The second pillar is dynamics and control, so you can control that speed and play it at different volumes. The third pillar is pattern pattern memorization because part of playing fast is being able to know these patterns inside and out. And the fourth pillar is muscle development. We need to train those muscles in order for them to work as fast as we want them to. So now let's learn an exercise to help us develop each pillar. And then at the end, we'll put it in a nice 30 day plan. All right, so pillar number one is technique. Now this is great information to have, but how do we actually improve our technique? Well. I'm about to tell you. One of the biggest problems that drummers have within their technique is their inability to utilize their fingers. And these are so important to get those micro movements in your stick for speed. This is all coming from your fingers. So what I like to use is something called the push-pull technique. This helps me work on my finger strength within my playing as a whole. So if we're to put this in exercise format, I like to use something called the push-pull pyramid, where we work on our push-pull by starting off with two on each hand, then we do four on each hand, and then we finally do eight on each hand. Now with pillar number two, we wanna be working on our dynamics and our control because if we just have a ton of speed but we can't control the speed and we can't change the dynamics, that's gonna sound super sloppy. And a side note, the word dynamics just refers to how soft or how loud you are playing your drums. If you're only playing loud, then you're not a very dynamic drummer. If you can play really quiet, medium, and loud, then hey, your dynamics are great. So the exercise that I have for you to work on this is called the single double pyramid. So the single double exercise is simply where you start off by playing a single stroke roll of just right, left, right, left, but then you switch to doubles, right, right, left, left. So we're playing these as 16th notes, so then you just repeat it, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, left. Now, if you're a little bit more advanced, you could play the doubles as 30 second notes. Right, that works. But the real work comes in with the dynamics and this is where we bring in the pyramid. So for the first measure of this, I want you to play this at a very, very quiet dynamic or volume. And what I want you to shoot for is just having the tip of your stick come off of the drum or the pad just three inches so it's nice and quiet. Then for measure number two, we are doing more of a medium dynamic. So now you're playing a little bit louder. Your sticks are maybe coming up between six to nine inches off of the pad. So you're a little bit louder, but you're not hitting it really hard. But then in measure three, you are. Your stick is gonna be coming up about 12 inches off the pad and you are gonna be playing really loud. So when we put all of that together, it sounds like this. Now, since the third pillar is pattern memorization, I'm going to give you a killer exercise to help you memorize these patterns. It's called the rudiment ladder, and here's how it goes. We are starting off with paradiddles, which is just a simple right, left, right, right, and then left, right, left, left. Those are played as 16th notes, but then in the next measure, we are playing a six stroke roll, which is right, left, left, right, right, left, and we are repeating that but we are playing this as 16th note triplets. So now we are counting it like this. One and a one and a two and a two and a three and a three and a four and a four and a. In the third measure, we are moving to double paradiddles, which again is in 16th note triplets. And the pattern here is 
right, left, right, left, right, right. So we're just adding a right, left to a normal paradiddle and then it flips just like a normal paradiddle. And then finally we are playing a paradiddle diddle, which is I know getting ridiculous, which is where we play a paradiddle, right, left, right, right, and then just add an extra diddle, left, left. So again, it's a six note pattern, but we're playing this as 16th notes because when we do, it ends on a right, right, which sets us up to do the whole rudiment ladder again, but with our left hand lead. Let's check it out. All right, so as we know, the fourth pillar is muscle development. So the exercise that I have for us here is called Tabata. Now Tabata is, I dropped my stick. Tabata is an exercise concept where you do something as fast as you possibly can for 20 seconds, and then you take a 10 second rest. Now you repeat this eight times for a total of four minutes. Trust me, this is gonna get your muscles burning. So for this exercise, I simply want you to play paradiddles in Tabata form. So what you're gonna be doing is playing paradiddles as fast as you can for 20 seconds and then a 10 second rest. And then you will keep repeating that for four minutes. Now remember, even though we're going as fast as we can, I still want you to have good technique and good form to the best of your ability. So now let's hear a quick example of a paradiddle Tabata. So for your 30 day plan for faster hands, here's what I want you to do. I want you to practice each exercise for five minutes total, five times a week. So this is working on your technique, control, and hand speed for 20 minutes a day, five days a week for 30 days total. Now remember at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you the ultimate 30 day speed plan. But now let's speed up your double kick. Now the ancient drummers discovered that there are four pillars of foot speed and to make sure that no one ever forgot what they were, they built speed hedge. So I'm gonna reveal what these four pillars of foot speed are and give you a 30 day plan so you can take your double kick speed to the next level. The first pillar is the most important one of all and if you don't develop this, you will not have a solid foundation to build off of. So the first pillar is technique. Having good technique with both feet is gonna make all your movements much more efficient and much more easy to execute. With ankle technique, you are essentially keeping your leg stable and only moving your foot hinging on your ankle. This is generally used for faster speeds with your double kick. You stop moving your whole legs up and down as much and you use more of those micro muscles. The incredibly simple exercise that I use to work on my ankle technique is a two measure exercise where I play eighth notes with my right foot. In the second measure, I simply play eighth notes with my left foot utilizing ankle technique. Let me show you what it looks like. This next pillar is designed to help your speed sound clean. The second pillar is control. Now this is a really important one because if you don't have control, there was no point of having speed in the first place. So I have two exercises for you to improve your control. So the first exercise we're gonna do is four measures long where we're playing quarter notes on the ride and snare drum on beats two and four. Now for the first measure, you're just gonna be playing quarter notes on the kick, but alternating. So right, left, right, left on the feet. Now the second measure, you're gonna be playing two 16th notes on the 1 E, 2 E, 3 E, 4 E. Then on the third measure, you're just going to add in one more note. So 1 E and, 2 E and, and so on. And then finally, the fourth measure, you are going to play straight 16th notes across the measure. So let's hear what this full exercise sounds like.
Now that is a great exercise, but if you're feeling a little bit more advanced, what I would teach you to work on your control is to do the same thing on the ride and snare. But on the kick drum, we are going to be playing three sixteenth notes, so on the one E and, just like we were doing before, but we are going to alternate which leg is leading. So it's gonna be right, left, right, then we flip it to left, right, left. Now let's hear what that sounds like. Whether you know it or not, there is an area in drumming that just gets completely skipped over in general. Without this pillar in place, you can experience fatigue and cramping on the kit. But with it, your feet will be able to play a ton of different tempos while feeling comfortable. And this all comes from pillar number three, which is muscle development. To help you build this, I'm gonna teach you my favorite double kick exercise called the double kick subdivision ladder. What you're gonna start off doing in measure number one is playing quarter notes. But even though this is very slow, I still want your notes to be alternating no matter what. Then measure number two, you're moving to eighth notes, then measure number three, you're moving to eighth note triplets. Now, if you're a beginner, this could honestly end right here. But if you want to continue to take the next steps, you can add on these next two measures, which measure number four would be 16th notes and measure number five would be 16th note triplets. So let's hear what that sounds like all together. Some drummers forget that it's not enough to just have speed because without this pillar, playing really fast almost doesn't matter, which is where pillar number four comes in, which is endurance, because we want our speed to last a really, really long time. So one of my favorite exercises to work on my endurance on really anything on the kit is something called Tabata. Now Tabata is generally used in fitness where you do an exercise as fast as you can for 20 seconds and then you take a 10 second rest. You normally repeat this for about four minutes. So what I want you to do is play 16th notes on the double kick pedal, 20 seconds as fast as you can, then you get a 10 second rest and you repeat this eight times for a total of four minutes. Trust me, this will make your legs burn. So let's hear what this sounds like when we do a quick example of Tabata. A little pro tip here is if things are starting to sound a little sloppy when you're trying to play as fast as you can, maybe lower the speed by 10% so that you're still practicing while sounding clean as opposed to practicing bad habits. If you practice these four pillars consistently, and especially if you have a nice 30 day plan, your double kick speed will improve dramatically. But before I give you that plan, let me show you what this actually looks like in context, utilizing some of these techniques and exercises with music. Check it out. So here is your 30 day plan for faster double kick speed. Practice each exercise for five minutes, no more than five days a week. So each practice session, you are gonna work on four exercises for a total of 20 minutes, 
five days a week. If you do this for four weeks straight, I promise you your double kick speed will explode. But now let's speed up that single kick before getting to the ultimate 30 day speed plan. So what a lot of drummers actually don't know is that there are a lot of components to your foot speed. It's not all about just how fast you can move your foot. There are actually four pillars of foot speed that we are gonna go over. Pillar number one is technique. You want to know how to move your pedal in the most efficient way, and that's where technique comes in. Number two is control. You can't build speed on the pedal if you don't have control over it. Number three is muscle development. You have to build those muscles in your leg and your feet. And pillar number four is endurance. It's not very helpful if you can only be fast with your kick pedal for 10 seconds. All right, now that we know all the pillars, we are going to learn an exercise to develop each pillar, and then at the end, we are going to put it in a nice, 30 day plan that is going to skyrocket your foot speed. First, let's start off with technique. And my favorite one being slide technique. Slide technique is simply when you slide your foot across the pedal to get two notes with one stroke. So this is a heel up technique. And basically what you are going to do is tap the left side of the pedal. And then as your heel starts to come down a little bit more, you slide your foot to the right side of the pedal. So you are able to get those two strokes with one movement of your leg. Now the slide technique is going to help you big time with those double strokes on the kick. And the perfect exercise to develop this technique is called the doubles displacement exercise. So this is a four measure exercise where we are just playing eighth notes on the closed hi-hat, snare drum on two and four, and then we are going to alternate two 16th notes on the kick drum. So the first measure, we're just playing on the downbeat in the E. So one E, two E, three E, four E. And then the next measure, we are going to shift those notes over a 16th note. So now we're playing on the E and the and of every single beat. Then measure number three, we are shifting over again, and then the same for measure number four. And the key here is to focus on your slide technique with each double. So now let me show you this exercise at a nice relaxed tempo so you can get a feel for it. Pillar number two is control. And a great way to build control, especially in your hand and foot relationship, is by doing split exercises. Split exercises are simply when you split a pattern between your hands and your feet. So in this case, we are going to do double splits. So we are just going to hit two 16th notes with your dominant hand and then two 16th notes with your foot. So one E on the hand and a uh on the kick, two E on the hand, and uh on the kick and you keep repeating that over and over. A nice little bonus is every measure you could switch which hand you're using. You could even alternate to just up the challenge level a little bit. So again, let's check this exercise out just at a nice controlled tempo. Pillar number three is muscle development. And this is where I like to add in more notes. We are moving past just doubles. So what we are going to play here is an exercise that I call the single to quad pyramid. So on the hands, we are simply going to play eighth notes on the hi-hat and snare drum on beats two and four. And then we are going to expand what our kick is doing every measure. So the first measure, we are just playing quarter notes. So singles just on one, two, three, and four. Measure number two, we are playing doubles, so 1E, e, 2E, 3E, 4E. Measure number three, we are playing triples. And measure number four, we are playing quads. So this actually just means we are playing 16th notes on the kick throughout the entire measure. Now, all these exercises are great because they can be beginner and advanced friendly. It just depends on what tempo you're playing it at. But with this exercise, maybe if the quads at the end are feeling too daunting, maybe cut those out. And even if the triples are feeling like too much, you just wanna alternate between singles and doubles, you can do that if you're more at the beginner level. So now let's hear what this full exercise sounds like, again, at a nice controlled tempo.
And now we are talking about endurance, and this is where your legs are going to start to burn like crazy. And that is because to work our endurance, we are using an exercise technique called Tabata. Tabata is where you do something as fast as you possibly can for 20 seconds straight. And then after that, you get 10 seconds rest. So you repeat this process eight times. So for a total of four minutes. So now we are going to translate this to your kick drum. What you are going to do is play straight 16th notes on the kick drum and just the kick drum for 20 seconds as fast as you possibly can. And then you get 10 seconds of rest and you repeat this for four minutes total. And trust me, your legs will burn a lot. <laughs> Let me show you a quick example. All right, so now that you know the exercises and you know the pillars, let's put it into a nice 30-day plan so that you can make serious progress and increase your foot speed. So what I want you to do is take each exercise and practice it for five minutes, five days a week for 30 days. So that means you are practicing a total of 20 minutes a day for five days a week. Now practicing each one of these pillars every single day is going to make sure that your foot is nice and well-rounded and that you have all the pillars working together to seriously up-level your speed. Now something that often gets overlooked is how important it is to strengthen your weak hand if you are looking for ultimate hand speed. So let me show you how to do this and then I will give you the ultimate 30-day speed plan. Today I am going to give you a 30-day plan that will take your weak hand from this to this. And by this, I mean adding on 30 BPM onto your weak hand. So let's jump into it. So to properly improve your weak hand, we need to take a look at the four pillars of hand speed. A lot of drummers just think speed is about how fast you can move your hands. And while that's certainly an aspect, there are actually four main pillars that we can focus on to not only gain speed, but gain control and gain technique along the way. So the four main pillars are, number one is technique. The second pillar is control. The third pillar is pattern memorization. And the fourth pillar is muscle development. All four of these things together work as a powerhouse for you to improve not only your weak hand speed, but really your hand speed in general. So what I'm gonna do is show you exercises from each pillar that will help you improve each pillar. And then after that, we will break it all down into a 30 day plan for you to get a really, really strong weak hand. The first exercise under the technique pillar that I want you to work on is push pull technique. Basically with this, you are going to have your fulcrum of your stick between your pointer finger and your thumb. You're gonna have your fingers nice and loose. Then essentially you are going to push the stick down into the head, which will rebound the stick up. And then you pull the stick back down with your fingers, which then brings your arm back up and you keep repeating that process. It's kind of like dribbling a basketball. This is gonna help your fingers get more involved and help you control rebound from your sticks so that this can overall improve your speed. Another great exercise for this is finger dribbling, where you do the same exact thing, but you are keeping your arm stationary and you are just dribbling the sticks with your fingers. The next one I want you to focus on is the push-pull pyramid. Again, this is all with your weak hand. So you start off doing the push-pull technique with quarter notes, then the next measure you move up to eighth notes, then the next measure you move up to eighth note triplets, then 16th notes, and if you can, 16th note triplets, and you keep repeating that process. This not only helps your push-pull technique with your weak hand, but you are also getting used to more subdivisions with your weak hand and powering through them with this technique. Now moving down to pillar number two with control, we have a great exercise called the single double exercise. What you are going to do here is switch between a single stroke and a double stroke roll every quarter note. And this is gonna be your weak hand lead again. So for me, the sticking pattern would be left, right, left, right, left, left, right, right. And then I would simply repeat that. One added layer here is you can change the dynamics 
every single measure. So you can play at a quiet dynamic in the first measure, a medium dynamic in the second measure, in the third measure, you are playing a loud dynamic. You can also do a 30 second note variation on this exercise simply with the doubles, which is really fun. And that sounds like this. Another great exercise for the control pillar is what I call the subdivision challenge. This is when we can take six note rudiments like the six stroke roll or paradiddle diddles and for one measure we play them as 16th note triplets and then the next measure we play them as 16th notes. If we were to do that with the six stroke roll it would sound like this. Moving on down to the pattern memorization pillar, we wanna make sure that we have some key patterns memorized. Because if you don't have muscle memory with some of these rudiments, it's going to be really hard to get them faster, especially with your weak hand lead. So what I want you to work on here is leading your singles and your doubles with your weak hand, even though that might not challenge your pattern memorization too much, but then moving into six stroke rolls, paradiddle diddles, all with your weak hand lead. Now let's move down to the fourth pillar, which is muscle development. You wanna make sure that all your muscles are developed in your arms for you to have optimal speed on the kit, especially with your weak hand. So what I do behind the kit is something called Tabata. Tabata is where you do something for 20 seconds as fast as you possibly can, and then you take 10 seconds rest. And you repeat this process for four minutes straight. That would be one round of Tabata. So trust me, once you do a round of Tabata with singles, doubles, or different rudiments, your arms are going to be burning, especially your weak hand, because you will want to lead with your weak hand. And I'll show you some different Tabata exercises as we get into the schedule of what you're doing for the next 30 days. Now, another exercise for muscle development, which is gonna make me look completely ridiculous, but this is from Jojo Mayer, who is an incredible drummer, so I trust him and it's worked for me, is where you simply put your forearms together like this and your wrists together and you do clapping, just like this. It is ridiculous, I know, but if you set a timer for a minute, two minutes, even in between Tabatas, your forearms are going to be absolutely burning because it is isolating those muscles. Now let me show you the whole plan that I made for you for the next 30 days to drastically improve the speed and development in your weak hand. Let's get into it. Okay, starting off with the pillar of technique. For week one, day one, you are gonna be working on just your weak hand doing the push-pull technique for 10 minutes straight. For technique day in week two, you're gonna be doing the same exercise, but just for five minutes, because the other five minutes, you are going to be doing finger dribbling with your weak hand. In week three, you're going to be doing a push-pull subdivision pyramid. So this means you're going to be doing the push-pull technique, but changing the subdivision each measure, starting off with quarter notes, then eighth notes, then eighth note triplets, then 16th notes, and if you can, 16th note triplets, and then you just start back over from the beginning for 10 minutes straight. Then for week four on technique day, we are combining all of these together and working on them for five minutes each. Then moving to the control pillar on week one, we are starting off with the single double exercise for just 10 minutes straight. In week two under control, we are doing the same thing, but with a 30 second note variation when those double stroke rolls come in. This will help you work on speed and changing subdivisions a little bit better. Week three, we are doing something brand new called the subdivision challenge, where you are starting off with six stroke rolls with your weak hand lead, played as 16th note triplets for one measure, then the next measure you are doing 
Again, a six stroke roll, but played as 16th notes with your weak hand lead. And you are going to switch every measure for 10 minutes. And then for week four, you're going to be doing the single double with 32nd note variation for seven and a half minutes, and then the subdivision challenge for another seven and a half minutes. Then going to the pattern memorization pillar, we are going to start off with single strokes for five minutes, weak hand leading, and then six stroke rolls with your weak hand leading for another five minutes. In week two, we are actually repeating this same exact exercise. Week three, we are doing left hand lead doubles for five minutes, and then left hand lead paradiddle diddles for five minutes. And then week four, we are doing these six stroke rolls for seven and a half minutes, weak hand lead, and then paradiddle diddles for seven and a half minutes also with your weak hand lead. Finally, for the fourth pillar of muscle development, we are working on Tabata with one round being just single note blasts as fast as you can. And then the last round of Tabata is just going to be this up close clapping technique. And again, Tabata is 20 seconds doing it as fast as you can, 10 seconds rest for four minutes straight. Week two, we are actually doing these same two Tabata exercises as well. Then week four, we have one round of Tabata where we play doubles as fast as we can. Then the second round of Tabata is where we are playing single note pyramids, where we play four sets of two notes, then four sets of three notes, then four sets of four notes, and four sets of five notes as fast as you can. And then you start back over from the very beginning. Then for week four, you're repeating these same to Tabata exercises, but while also throwing in some single note blasts as well. So three notes of Tabata total. Seriously, if you commit to this for the next 30 days, the speed and control that you will gain in your weak hand will be monumental. It's really going to change your playing in a huge way. Okay, so we just covered a ton of ground. Now that you know how to speed up all of these elements of your drumming, it's time to put it together in a 30 day ultimate speed plan. So go ahead and screenshot this slide and commit to the next 30 days of working on these exercises. I promise you will see a difference. And if you wanna take your drumming to the next level while getting a personalized performance review from me, a free ticket to an I Prevail show to meet me in person and get a huge discount to DBO Academy, Click right here to join at the cheapest price ever. We'll see you there.